Yeah, this report didn't come as a result of proactive work by Mr. O'Brien. It didn't result from proactive work by the health executive. It resulted from very painful experiences by two whistleblowers, one of whom came before us in private session, and I don't think there was a single member of the public accounts that didn't shed a tear on the day, not for the whistleblower who deserved tears, but for what she was describing that Grace had gone through and what the health board had done, in her opinion. And this report came because through her creativity and her partner's creativity, they found a way to bring the matter before the Public Accounts Committee and your predecessor, uh, Mr McGuinness, who played a blinder in, in working with them, I have to say, and, and the committee members at the time. And all of that pain, all of that extreme effort to get before the Public Accounts Committee and the creativity to look at value for money in terms of... Um, tendering in relation to the reports that the health executive uh, commissioned and then left sitting on a desk and in relation to th that body being deprived of money and in effect being punished and our attention was drawn to minutes and in the minutes it was recorded that that voluntary body should be reminded where their money was coming from. You may recall that chair. Now, I, I have huge difficulty that this Mr O'Brien, who's on a huge salary, who had access to the newspaper on a Sunday to say politicians were reluctant to make difficult decisions and has very strong opinions, has absolutely failed to provide us with a report that was produced by an independent accountancy firm on a simple matter to clarify what funding if any, and was there a reduction in it given to a voluntary body that had gone out on a limb to support the two whistleblowers in their very difficult time. Now, if the whistleblowers suffered that difficulty over the period of time that they did, from 2009 to 2017 and continuing, what in God's name did Grace and the other people placed inappropriately in, in, in foster accommodation suffer? And now we're here in relation to value for money, and the value for money we're going to look at is in a delight report that hasn't been furnished to us. It has nothing to do with a commission of inquiry. It's a factual report on whether the body received money or didn't receive money, or was it reduced, was it increased, full stop. Now, we've had talk about the guards, and I fully agree with accountability, but this is one item that we should stand together. And Mr O'Brien should be brought back in here, Chair with the report so furnished to us immediately. And let's have a look at it and let's discuss this with Mr O'Brien. That's the least we owe to Grace and it's the least we owe to the whistleblowers who we're utterly reliant on. And finally, Chair, I'm sorry for taking time with your colleague, Mr Lennon. I attended a public accounts um, conference on Monday in Cardiff. And the one thing that came across was our utter reliance on whistleblowers. Brilliant job being done by the Controller and Auditor General here and in Northern Ireland and in England. But at the end of the day, we're utterly reliant on whistleblowers. And if this is the way we're treating them, God help us as a democracy.